Hey guys, um, I just wanted to make this quick video to show you one way I've been using um, the iMotion HD app in class and it's had a really good, uh, I've had some really good feedback from students about its use. Um, it's quite fun, fun to use and they can actually produce something with some really good content in a really um, relatively short amount of time. So um, we're going to get started and I'll show you one way that I've been using iMotion HD which is a basically a stop motion or time lapse camera. Okay, so Here's the, um, the top of the screen up here. You can see the, um, the icon for the app. So I'm just gonna touch on that and get this started. And this is basically what the interface looks like. So it opens up, um, if I show you what, what screen you actually um, get to when you open it up, it looks like uh, this. So this is usually what comes up when you open it for the first time. And uh, I'm just gonna touch on new movie just here and then you can add in the title so I'm just going to call this um, one thing I did for my class was to get them to do one of these animations on the structure of DNA yeah, structure okay happy with that just going to place um, press start there and then we get our screen come up so it's a camera it's just the bench and I'm just sliding it a paper underneath here now I should just flip back into uh, cancel for a second because what I forgot to show you was um, sorry, new movie. Um, you've got a couple of options here about which allow you to, I guess, arrange how you want your shots to be taken. So we've got time lapse photos, which means they can be taken um, automatically every um, whatever you set this bar to. So from one from 0 0.25 seconds up to one day. Um, I usually take them every second for the project I'm going to show you next. Um, you can take them manually, which means you uh, you press the, the shutter button. You can actually download another app called iMotion HD Remote, which allows you to do it from another device. And all these options there for microphone. I haven't explored this one much yet, but let's just say we want to, for the following project, set it so that photos are taken automatically every second. Right now, I'll press start. And what I will do is um, underneath the camera here, I've just placed this piece of paper and. My idea here is to write some content on this paper and um, there won't be any audio with it which I, but I can add that later on through GarageBand or, or, um, or iMovie but I'm going to press start and what this is doing is um, you can see up in the corner here it's taking an image every second. Now if I start writing some information on here, so say for example our topic is um, the structure of DNA. You can also turn that shutter noise off if you like, um, which I may be able to do here. That just makes it easier for me to talk and you're not interrupted by that sound. Okay, so DNA structure, all right, and what I might start by doing if I was a student, I would, I would maybe draw a diagram of the DNA, the double helix, just so someone watching this kind of gets an idea about, that's not a great helix, but um, gets an idea about what we're talking about and then you might draw the nitrogenous bases in the middle that are holding it up and then you could also start writing some some content here so um, DNA stands for uh, deoxyribonucleic acid All right deoxyribonucleic acid um, DNA, where are we? Sorry. DNA is a double stranded molecule. Right, and then you might go on to talk about um, the nucleotides that are the monomers of a DNA strand and then describe. Uh, the structure as well, so you might go on and say, right, well, they're made up of a nitrogenous base, and that could be cytosine, adenine, um, thymine, or guanine. Um, you might also go on and say, this is a deoxyribose sugar, and this is an inorganic phosphate. Um, okay, so lots of different ways you can add there. Now, one thing I've been doing is moving the paper around, but what actually works a little bit better is if you tend to leave the paper a little bit. Uh, static and move the camera around. So if you've got something that can hold your iPad or your iPhone relatively stable then you can move that around to zoom in on things that might be of more interest. So we might go up here and, and start looking at the individual, um, let me see if I can get my 
picture in here. All right, um, the individual bonds that join two nucleotides together and go, okay, well that uh, bond in between those two nucleotides is a hydrogen bond. And then you can zoom out and show how Sorry, that's a horrible picture of part of the double helix, but it gives you um, a, a nice way to zoom into maybe structures that need a little bit more detail up nice and close and then zoom out to give um, your students or yourself uh, an overall picture of where that feature stands in the overall scheme of, of the concept you're trying to describe. Um, now I'm just going to pause it there and at this stage I could press resume and that would start recording again. Maybe I've gone away to find out a little bit more information about uh, DNA. Um, or I might just be happy, uh, if, I, if I wanted to add more I could click resume and it would just start taking photos again from where it left off. Um, but at the moment I'm happy with that, let's just say that's all I want to um, do. So I'll just touch on the stop button down the bottom right hand corner, then I have to do that twice, because it asks me so I'm sure I want to do it, and confirm. And it processes those images into basically this. Alright, so you're getting your stop motion movie I guess put together and you can actually create something that has a lot of content in a relatively short amount of time, which makes it easy if you want to watch something your students have done, but without having to sit down and go over it for ages and ages. So I'm just going to pause that, because I think we're having a bit of a problem with the projector. Okay, sorry guys, not too sure what happened there, we'll back on. And um, basically what you can see here is, I've slowed down, I've used this toolbar here, uh, or the slider bar here to to slow down my, my frames, so it's at one frame per second at the moment and what I can do is move that from anything we from 1 up to 20 to 30 which is quite quick um, but I like to keep it around about 8, eight frames per second when I get, do this or get my class to do it but they've got to work out what works best for them and um, at about this speed it allows you to when you add your audio say something meaningful that matches up with the picture without having to speed through it too quickly um, which I find is quite useful um, now once you've done and you're, um, you're happy, or I mean you don't need to add audio, that's kind of a next step if you just want your students to make something like this and then share it with the class. What you can do next is press on the export button down here if you're happy with it. So by pressing export that allows you to send it to your photo library or to Facebook. Um, now by the way this app is free, um, there is a paid version of it which it gives you more exporting options but I think um, you don't necessarily have to do that once it's exported to your photo library, which I'm going to do here. Um, then you could always email that to other people or you could up, um, upload that to YouTube if you really wanted to. Um, so that takes a little bit to export and then after it's finished exporting here, depending on the number of images you take, it'll take longer to export. Um, but once that's done, that'll be found as a video file in your camera roll and what you do with that next is up to you. Alright, well if you've got any questions, just uh, post them below. I hope you find this useful. Any feedback would be great. Thanks.